two million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. The any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Hey, either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And are not afraid to say it. And I'm 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 and I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is BlackWestchester.com presents the People Before Politics radio show. We're on every Sunday, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com, giving you that real talk for the community since 2014. Um, we have a, a big show. We have three judicial candidates coming on today. Uh, Judge Tom Daly, Judge Brendan McGrath, and Yonkers City Court candidate Veris Shako. Um, they'll be on today's show. But before that, I want to talk about a couple of things. Let me see what's going on this week. So as you see, the, um, the we just had the South Carolina primary that everybody's been talking about. It seems that the reports of Joe Biden, the people who wrote Joe Biden, Biden the, yeah. the people who wrote Joe Biden's political obituary, obituary. was a little <laughs> premature because Joe Biden kept telling everybody, oh, don't worry about the first three. Wait till we get to South Carolina. And everybody's like, oh, he's gone. It's, it's a wrap for him. He's now, um, he won 48.4% um, of the vote, earning 35 delegates, bringing him to uh I think 50 delegates, which took him from damn near last to second place, um, just under Bernie Sanders, who now has uh, 58 delegates. Um, Mayor Pete, who won the first primary, and everybody was like, oh, my God, Mayor Pete's going to do it. He's going to be the one that win. Oh he he, he uh, didn't score much, and he is knocked down to um, third place with 26 delegates almost um, close to 30 delegates below both Biden and uh, 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 Bernie. Um, uh, Elizabeth Warren has a, a whopping total of eight delegates so far, and Amy Klobuchar <laughs> has seven delegates so far. But but May, Mayor Pete said he is going to stay in the race. He is not, that he's not taking this. As a sign to get out the race, he's going to fight it all the way to the end. And actually, if I can make an early prediction, I believe that we may possibly go into the Democratic convention without a decisive winner. And it will have to be decided on the floor um, at this point because we still got, just like everybody counted Bernie out, people are counting Bloomberg out, and he spent all that money, and we got Super Tuesday, and if he does good like he thinks of Super Tuesday, he's going to be sprung right up in there in them top two or three as well. So um, I think it's going to be a shootout to the end. Um, a couple of other things. I was, Damon and myself, were a bunch among a bunch of people who were blessed to see a private screening of the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. Um, we went to the the, the first one Thursday. Um, then they had another one Saturday. I got to meet the, the actor Frankie Faison, who plays um, Kenneth Chamberlain's father. Y'all know Frankie Faison from 
the 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 super and coming to America. Uh, you know him as Pops, owner of the barbershop, and Luke Cage. You know him as a detective in The Wire and various other things. Yo, know, to meet this brother was very was very good. Um, he's very humble. Um, I was I was, and he, um, I was, Sandy Barnaby was there. And one of the things we talked about, neither one of us actually met Mr. Chamberlain. Um, you know, I was in Atlanta. I came back in 2014. He was killed in 2011. And both me and Sandy both were talking about. Watching that film and seeing Frankie Faison, we felt we met Mr. Chamberlain. That's how good he played that role. We felt we actually met Mr. Chamberlain. Like he he transformed that role. And um, I, I'm I'm where it's you know the movie is is um, going to a few more film festivals. But when I'm gonna say when, not if, when this hits the big screen, everybody needs to go out and see this film. Um, when is it gonna hit the big screen? Well, it's not even scheduled right now. It's just, it's just at the at the film festival level, trying to get you know a distribution deal or whatever. It doesn't have anything like that as of yet. Um, but um, I know that you know that this the this this is a, a a great moment for the 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 fight for justice, the nine year fight for justice that Kenneth Chamberlain has been in. A lot of these people, you know, um, I always say. I've said it to him on the show. I've said it to him every time I see him. When your father gets killed by the police department in the city that you live in, and you have to see these same officers in the street, and officers even told him F you when he was trying to get answers and called his father the N-word and et cetera, it would be understandable if he had an F the police mentality. But this man started the Westchester Coalition for Police Reform and is working with every um, police commissioner and every department that will that will work with him to for better police community relations. You know what I'm saying? Like that's incredible. I don't I don't I would like to think that I could be that big of a person if the police department had killed my father. I don't know if I could, but I give him credit. And then you got to feel like the victimization, like all the other families, like um, Constance, Malcolm, we call a little miss, um, the mother of Ramali Graham, she was there, and a couple of other um, um, family members of the victims of police brutality, they were there and they spoke. And it's like once you once you don't get any convictions and nobody goes to jail, it's almost like being victimized twice. Um, it's the inspiration of a new book I'm writing on police brutality. I'm going to tell you I'm way more about that in coming coming future, but I'm working on a book right now on police brutality. Um, it deals with that case and several other cases and the frustration, um, why there is the frustration in the black community. A lot of people don't understand. When I, when I would get on these radio shows on WVOX and WFAS and all these other shows that, you know, the white listeners were asked, why are they so angry? Why are they so frustrated? Why do they riot? Well, this book hopefully will answer those questions. And it is definitely meant to disturb people and make people uncomfortable. Um, I have a quote on my Facebook page um, um, from from um from um I think it's I think it's from Muhammad Ali um and and I think that describes what I'm doing with this book it says I am the disturbance in your sea of complacency and I will not stop shaking your waves this book is meant to make people uncomfortable this film about Kenneth Chamberlain's death is meant to make people uncomfortable um and um I know I'll be working on the book. I'm working on the book every day. Hopefully, I'll be finished the first draft by the end of March. And um, I'll be keeping you all up to date on um, the status of the film. Um, just keep looking out for that. It's The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. It was in the Austin Film Festival. It um, won a couple of awards. It's going to a couple more film festivals. I got to talk to the producer and the director and all of them. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. Shout to um, Nesta Felix. She had her... Um, her winter ball last year they honored I was one of the honorees last year and the first one is the second annual one um but unfortunately it was Thursday I was I was asked to um co-host it with um when Andre Wallace who hosted last year um but I was a, I was at the uh VIP screening of the Kenneth Chamberlain the private screening so I was not able to go I couldn't be in both places unfortunately but um shout out to her <clears throat> I heard the event was very good 
Um, they honored a couple of people like um, uh, former Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson. I know they honored um, uh, the Mount Vernon City Clerk, George Brown, who just retired on February 28th. Um, this is the day before his retirement, before he retired officially. Um, so congratulations to him as well. Um, and they honored a few other people, Shanice Coleman, who's been on the show, and so a few other people. I don't remember everybody's name, but I just wanted to give them a shout out. Um, let me see what else happened this week. Um, there's been a whole lot of stuff going on right now. Um, um, the, the, the Westchester DA race is continuing to heat up. Um, I think we talked a little bit about it before. We had wrote an editorial why uh, the Westchester DA, Anthony Scarpino, had not released his bad cop list um, when all of the um, district attorneys from the city had released theirs in October, November, and December. He had yet to release his, and I think we put some pressure on him. And he did release his, and then he got a lot of flack. That's what he's regretting releasing that list. Right. He's, he's, he got a lot of flack um, from the Yonkers PBA, Ken Olson. Olson? That's his name? Keith Olson. Olson. Keith, oh, sorry, Keith. Keith Olson, um, the Westchester County PBA. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to get you in a minute. Westchester County PBA um, and a few others uh, have come out about his list. And... Um, the, the 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 names on the list included his own investigator Andrew Ludlam, um, who was an investigator in his Intel squad, I guess, or whatever you call it. Um, um, before, without further ado, let me um, get on the screen for you. My lovely co-host Lorraine Lopez is in the building. Say what's up to the people. Hey. Yes, 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 yes. Now I know um, you had some feelings about the list, or about the Yonkers, and you had made. What was your thoughts on that? The bad cop list. You had made some. Comments. You know, I, I just find it interesting that the bad cop list for Westchester County has four Yonkers PD in it. One is a, just a recent one, the one that was caught with the theft. I mean, he just recently got on the list, maybe the last month. So. Prior to that, it was just three police officers from Yonkers on that list. And I just find it very interesting that all three of them happen to be Hispanic. Wow. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. I mean, that's probably the, the, the amount of Hispanic police officers we have. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I have to question the list. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sharing the articles right now that we did on the list and... The people that criticize the list, I'm sharing them in the comments section so y'all can check them out at your leisure, um, just in case you don't know what we're talking about. Um, 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 Damon, as the head of Blacks and Law Enforcement, had a similar cr critique about black officers in Mount Vernon. It didn't, really? it, didn't, it didn't include any of the white officers, including the one that I nicknamed the Million Dollar Man. Yeah who has cost the city millions of dollars in payouts of, for, for excessive force and other things. He is not on the list. And the one person that is uh, the the the, um, the uh, PBA president in Mount, Mount Vernon is on the list. But no. He's on the, but he's on the list for, like, something domestic that, like, I guess some... That happened, happened, well, like 20 years ago, right? Right. So okay. it was just like... Um, and 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 um you know and then there's a couple of people on the list um Ken Ken Olson was complaining a Keith couple Olson. of the Keith I'm sorry Keith I keep saying Ken sorry my bad um he was complaining that some of these people had like a DWI like this list is supposed to be a list that of people who they can't they're not credible witnesses at trials because they falsified information they've lied they've done things of that nature that they're having a DWI which is never a good thing but having a DWI in your personal life 10 20 years ago does not make you an uncredible witness um now you, you know what I'm saying like that does not make you an uncredible witness in an arrest that you made now like that that has nothing to do with what the list was supposed to be. So Do you even, think that list was in existence or, or he put it together real quick because I, 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 I can't now I can't say that the list didn't exist because I, I do know that I heard early on that the um list was included his his um one of his investigators. He just didn't release the list. 
Um, oh, okay. And 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 it has the appearance. Now we reached out to um, us D A Scarpino. He's scheduled to come on the show March 29th, and we'll give him a chance to talk about that on for himself and 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 answer to all that. <clears throat> it has the alleged look. It has the appearance of that list was created and put out because of the pressure we put on him about not releasing the list. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can't say that's the reason he released it, but that's what um, that's what's being said. And that is what's being said. So um, I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm sure he's regretting releasing it. I think he probably would have would have dealt with arguing back and forth with Mimi, Mimi Roca over it than having to deal with PBA presidents being angry at him. I mean, do you, it, it's probably going to cost him one or two endorsements. Yeah, and, 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 and he's running for re-election, and, you know, he's probably going to have problems now with the police unions. Yeah, that's West what I'm Ch saying. With, throughout, all, throughout all of Westchester County because of the list, um, you know, um, which is not, let me be honest. Which well, is listen, not, it's, it's called not, the Adverse Credibility List. Right, we call and it And I think there's the a credibility question with the credibility list. <laughs> right, and we nickname it, it's nicknamed the Bad Cop List. That's, I've just been calling it, but um, as you said, so so this list, and I just want to say, so this list is a list, a Bad Cop List is complied by district attorneys, a police officers who took an oath to protect and serve the community, but unfortunately can't be trusted on arresting reports, evidence gathering, testimony, past misconduct allegations, lawsuits, and information like this is usually supplied to prosecutors and sometimes defense attorneys. More recently, DAs have started making these lists public. Um, the all the DAs in in, in 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 the five boroughs released theirs October, November, and December. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were calling in February why hasn't he released his list. So so that you can read more about it and, and you can actually see the list in the last link I sent I posted. Um it actually has the list there. And again, these people that had DWIs and stuff don't fall into that criteria of the adverse credibility list um, of their professional conduct on the job. Um, that does not make them an uncredible witness. So I, I think that there's a problem with that on the list. But again, there's two sides to every story. Um, he, we will give him a chance to address all of that when he comes on the show March 29th, he has finally accepted our invitation, and um, we will see. Um, real quick, before we bring our first guest in, shout to the people tuned in. Oscar Davis Jr., Mount Vernon Public Library president, uh, trustee president, Glenn Butler. Happy birthday. Ha he Oscar. just had Oscar. Yes, yes, uh, he Oscar. had a birthday. Happy birthday, yes, again, Oscar. Glenn, Glenn Butler, I saw him at the Kenneth Chamberlain screening. Uh, Pat English from Strong Island, from uh, Central Ice of Long Island. Um, Nancy Cater Maldonado. Hey, Nancy. Um, Dr. Bob is not in the building today. I forgot to give him a shout out, but he is tuned in. Dr. Bob's in the lab doing some research. Got some research projects. He's working on some stuff. It might be a book coming from him sometime soon. I'll let him share all that next time he's on. Ty Hardy, Paul Anthony Cuesta, um, who also was at the screening. Um, uh, Delphin uh, Huesler, Ken Bright. Um, and Delphin said, Black Westchester Magazine always does a great job. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Dawn Tyson. Um, um, who else? Uh, Daniel Terry. Um, Yonkers Councilwoman Tasha Diaz. Um, New Rochelle Councilwoman Yadira Ramos Herbert. Uh, Chris Breezy and Mount Vernon. Uh, Marvin Church, friend of the show. And, of course, Uncle Frank. Frank Trulio Jr., another friend of the show. Uh, Ken Bright says, tarnishing the decent cops is not right. And and, and that's true. I, I believe there is a need for this list, but we um we um it, it I, I don't think that this was done uh right. Without further ado, we're going to get into our first guest uh Lorraine, can you ask him to come in uh real quick and introduce him? Um Bob said yes, yes, AJ and says hello to everybody. Um we got a full show, like I said before. We have our first guest. 
I'm going to let um, pull the mic up close to you. Um, you can, if you want to, sign into your Facebook or whatever on your computer um, and, 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 and whatever social media you want to do. You can do all of that. Um, oh, the, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> just hang out with us. Um, the the <laughs> show, <laughs> the show is the show is streaming live on my Facebook page, AJ Woodson, and you can share it to your page so your people can see it as well. And uh, shout, wait, wait, shout, shout out to Johnny, Johnny Limo. Limo. Hey, John. Shout out to Johnny Limo who's tuned in, and Lorraine. Lorraine, yeah. shout out to Lorraine Lopez. Four. She is the one who scheduled all today's guests, the three judicial candidates. So I want to give her a big shout out. She put this show together. Um, and I'm going to let her introduce the first guest. All right. Our very first guest today is, well, you're a sitting judge now. We currently are. And so <laughs> yes. this is the Honorable <laughs> Judge Brendan McGrath. Okay. Uh, he was appointed, a former Inspector General for the City of Yonkers, appointed to the seat of City Court Judge by Mayor Spano. Okay. And is currently running for the, the spot that he is in. Okay. Congratulations. And, Thank you much. Um, Yes, um, Johnny Limo said good evening to all. Um, hey, so, John, how are you? <laughs> so, um, go ahead, uh, Lorraine, uh, start the questions. Off. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I thought you would do it. Okay, I'm let you start now what you what well, check this out. You know what I did? What did you do? Since we have judges, and there were certain things you guys cannot speak about, I went on the internet. And I found 10 questions that we can ask the judge. Can oh, they? see, there you go. Now let's kick it off with that. <laughs> and she dressed apart, too. She looks for a little judicial today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get on nobody's list. <laughs> That's it. Um, first of all, why? Are, no, the, the basic question is why are you running for judge? Good question. So um, I have a, a yeah, I have a 30 year career in, in public service. Uh, I started off in the New York State Assembly working as a legislative director. Um, I went to law school after that. From there, I went to the county attorney's office in Westchester. Uh, I worked uh, with the Department of Social Services, uh, helping them prosecute uh, cases of abuse and neglect. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I, uh, I went to, uh, I, I came to Yonkers, to the court counsel's office uh, for, for about two years, and then I was appointed to the, uh, the Office of Inspector General. So. Given the experience I have, I, I believe that um, I have the credentials uh, to sit on the city court. Uh, the mayor was, uh, uh, I mean, he humbled me by the appointment. Uh, I w wasn't sure that that was going to happen. Uh, but when he asked me about it and he, he wanted to meet with me and, and he wanted to hear about all of the things that I had done in my life that, that would, you know, that would bring Qualify me to this you. point. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that was it, and uh, and then it was up to him, and he made the appointment, and obviously making the appointment, knowing that I would have to run this year uh, to 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 um, uh, to get the full ten year term. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what I'm running for now. So, yeah, I, I believe this is a it's it's a um, uh, it's a progression in my um, in my legal career. It certainly is something that uh, many many lawyers aspire to, and uh, and I'm humbled by the. Uh, the appointment, and it's been a it's, it's been a tremendous experience for the for the, about the two months that I've been sitting so far. Okay. Now, uh, uh, one last question, as far as the the position, we try to educate people as much as possible sure. on the show. So, what's the difference between the city court judge and say county judge? There's right. different cases that you'll yes. hear. We can yeah. So for for city court, um, we handle we handle the basics of of, of of city life, right? So we got traffic court. We have city code violations, so if your grass is too high, if you're drinking in the park, if you know those are city code violations. We have traffic. We have landlord tenant. It's a big part in in, in the Yonkers City Court. Uh, there's small claims in Yonkers City Court, and then there's a criminal part in in Yonkers City Court. So the difference between y Yonkers Criminal Court and the County Court is that we don't we don't try felonies okay. in okay. Uh, in Yonkers City Court. So oh, that would okay. be where the county court picks up. So, so the person would see you for a bail hearing, and then after that, they would go right. So, depending on on the ch on the charge and how the DA wants to proceed, the DA may may want to keep the, the charges. It, it might be charged as a felony, right. but they may want to they may want to you know what they do we call like a superseding misdemeanor. They may they may drop the charge so it ends up staying in Yonkers anyway. But if it's a if it's a hardcore crime, it's gonna it's gonna end up in uh, in Westchester County. Okay, okay, and that's the county court. 
Mm-hmm. There, there are three positions open, I believe, right, and five candidates. I don't know if Karen Best is still a candidate. She says she. Well, she says she was running, according to her, when she was on the show. She says she was running. That's all I know. Okay, and then you're running on a ticket with, um, with Judge Daly, Judge Daly, and. Mm-hmm. Varashenko. The, the other two guests that are coming. And then there's there. also another judge running who is who will be here. I think it's on March 22nd. I scheduled him. Okay. Dan Dan Romano. Yeah. He's very very popular. Very okay. popular out there too, getting a lot of traction. Okay. Okay. So what is your ten questions that you can ask a judge? <laughs> I can think. I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm about to learn something. <laughs> me I'm about too. To, I'm, about to, I'm interested. I'm glad she did that. All right. Can you explain your judicial philosophy in plain English? Yeah, so it's it's it is it is really um, it is really just pull the mic a little closer oh, to you. Sorry, it is really yeah. um, the sum and substance of my entire existence. So uh, you know, I I was uh, I was born in Nershell. I went to Nershell High School. I have um, you know I went to uh, a SUNY uh, SUNY Brockport. I, I, you know I. I all these experiences that I had that I mentioned, my, my legal experience, the, the, the legislature, the county attorney's office, all that. When I sit on a bench, I bring all that to me. So the philosophy is, um, is really, uh, you know, you, judges need to be compassionate. You know, they need, yeah. to see, they need to see the world for what it is. Um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not living life inside of, you know, a bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, so we take everyday experiences and, and we and we look at them. So uh, it's con- it's you know compassion is is one of the things uh, uh, I, I like to think I bring to the bench and is part of my philosophy. And um, and the other things are, are are what you learn along the way as far as being uh, being an attorney and 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 practicing in court. Having spent a lot of time in family court, I know that a lot of the litigants are are people who've you know just fell on hard times. And it's uh, and and it's you know maybe it is the fault that uh, their fault that they're there, uh, but um, but we need to we need to look at them uh, you know compassionately as we as we make determinations as judges. Which leads me to this question. Well, let me scroll down because this um, it's a two part question. Okay. How do you define injustice, and how would you deal with injustice when you're confronted in your courtroom? Good question. Yeah, I, injustice is. I think when um, you know we talk about how law enforcement um, may abuse their uh, authority, um, uh, injustice is when someone you know is is um, uh, is, is treated um, in, in a way that uh, I mean and I don't want to make it sound too basic, but it's it's in a way that's unfair. When someone comes to me and and, and and I see that the injustice has been, um, you know, perpetrated on someone. Uh, I will do my best to, to fix that. I will do my best to sort of right the injustice if it's possible. Again, the part of the questions that we can't really uh, espouse upon. Let's talk about what you're going to do in the court. Yeah, is what yeah. what I would do in a particular yeah. case. But where injustice, you know, injustice is uh, is out there all the time, and people are arrested for wrong reasons all the time. And this isn't the thing about bad cops or anything like that. This is the thing about. Uh, and it may be a, maybe a prosecutor who has a, a, an axe to grind with somebody, mm-hmm. but you know those are things that to me are, are uh, injustices uh, that that will ultimately come to me in in um, uh, in my capacity as a judge. You have any questions? Anything? No, I want you to ask your ten questions. Yeah, I, I want these are questions that I'm going to intercede, but I want to hear the questions there. These are very good. Yeah. Okay. Ah, how would you balance being an independent judge and an elected official? The reason judges have ten and fourteen year terms are just that, just so yes. you don't so yes. you don't have to worry about, you know, your Congress people have to worry about election every two years. Yes. So they get elected in November and they're worrying about re-election that next January. Mm-hmm. You know, they're raising money, they're doing all that. So, it's funny, but. And only because I'm new on the bench, but Judge Daly has been sitting on a bench for 10 years. He hasn't been able to participate politically, yeah. which is a little bit of a disadvantage um, for a sitting judge. But it, that's the reason, because mm-hmm. you want to maintain your independence. And it's an excellent question, but that's, that's, I think, the theory behind long judicial terms, so that you are not out there politicking 
from day one. Yeah. You're, you're sitting there as an independent member of the judiciary, um, you know, without regard to party or affiliation or anything like that. So how would you handle conflicts of interest on the bench? Um, so a very recent example, I, I, I was in the small claims court. I walked out, and the, the first case that got called was somebody I knew. Um, so I, I told both parties that I know party A, and um, I, I feel like I can be uh, impartial in this matter, but, uh, but you know, I, I will leave it to the parties to decide whether or not that should, uh, I, should be, I should recuse myself or, or if they wanted to ask for another judge, and they did. And I thought that was fine. But uh, conflicts of interest arise all the time. I will always err on the side of caution. And there are seven judges in the city of Yonkers. Uh, there's always somebody else to, to, to take your, you know, your spot if, if the conflict arises. So what is that, three so far, four? Which, uh, it sounded like 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on, come on. Keep it going, keep it going. All right. How would you work to ensure equality for people of all backgrounds in your courtroom? But I think you answered that. Yeah, if I when, if I, when, if you, I when, can... you, when you talked about... Um, um, that, no, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, and it's, it's a good question. It's, and it, maybe, maybe I did touch on it before. But, um, you know, I, I, the case has come before me, and um, like a small claims, the litigants tell their stories. I mean, and, and it's... I don't... I, I, I'm not... Uh, you know, it, it, there is no, and I don't want to sound um, trite about this, but there is no color, there is no, uh, I, I don't, you know, there is no language barrier, you know, whatever it, it, it is, it is, and, and people come with very serious problems to, to city court, and, um, and I take every, every case very seriously. Now, can I interrupt? So, yeah. a, lot of a lot of people in the black and brown community mm -hmm. feel that, you know, there's a saying that justice is blind. And a lot of people in the black and brown community feel like she, you know, peeks under the the the, the, the uh, under the blindfold right. before she rules. You know what I'm saying? Right, Sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. Um, um, I don't know if you can speak to that or just. Well, it's it's look. That's just wrong. It's just. I mean, I'll say it. It's not. I'm not talking about a particular case. But um, the the people that you elect, you should be very very clear. Ask these questions. Ask all sorts of questions. That they they don't have. Uh, these types of biases. Um, uh, judges, at, at a bare minimum, uh, have to be impartial, but they do come to the bench with experiences and, and backgrounds and things like that. And so if you're going to elect a judge that you want to, to represent um, you know, your community, you better be sure that they understand the community. Now, how, now, you know, one of my challenges, and we've been doing a lot of judicial candidates in the last year, in the la last year's election, mm -hmm. um, but you can only ask them certain questions, and some of the candidates fall on that, oh, I can't speak on that because I'm a judge. And it's like you can't really ask them about their record, and you can't ask them about something. So how do you, how do you determine, you know, uh, how do you find out if, 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 you, if a lot of them say they can't talk about that and, and you right. know. Right. So I, I have an extensive – I'm only a judge for two months. So, I, I, you know, I've ruled on – uh, a handful of cases right but as inspector general as a, as a county attorney I have a record um, and people can talk to people I've worked with those aren't confidential those aren't I you know things that I can't talk about right. if um, somebody wanted to talk to me about a, a, a case that I worked on in the county attorney's office I'd be happy to talk to them about that right. um, but uh, but that's I think that's how it's done so you, 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 you have to take, you have to look at that person, do a little bit of background. You gotta do a little bit of, um, uh, I don't wanna say digging, but look at their credentials and, and see if they, you know, would they have a bent towards one side or another? You might be able to see that. Right. And if you see it, you can ask about it. Right, right, right. Um, one of our listeners, uh, Hector Santiago in Yonkers, <clears throat> has a stop question shake, for Hector. you. He oh. does the stop and shake. Yeah. Um, he said, what are your thoughts on the school to prison pipeline? Um, again, I think that's something that I don't, I don't have a, I'm going to, I'm going to fall back on that, on that answer. I think there's, um, uh, there's something to that. Um, I think that the best thing we can do in the courts is, um, and, and there is, you know, the, the youth court used to be very active in, in the city of Yonkers. I think it's something that might, you know, yeah. uh, you know, might, we might need to do that again. Um, 
where you know Hector does a great job with stop and shake. So you you're meeting the officers before they become involved in your life, um, it, for good or bad. But um, you know it, it might not be a bad idea to have these you know these kids in high school or even even grade school um, involved in the court system to see how it works. And 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 um, I do a, I do a mock trial program uh, down at the, the Bronx Courthouse. It's called the, the Thurgood Marshall um, mock trial program, okay. and. Uh, it is, it is tremendous. Gives seventh and eighth graders uh, a, a look at a criminal, a real criminal case. It's, you know, it's fictional names and stuff, but um, they get to see how, how the court system works. Um, I'm not sure what the, what the rate of, uh, you know, whether those kids end up doing better than any other kids, but, uh, but I, think it, I think it does. I think it helps them tremendously. So I think exposure to the court system is, is uh, always beneficial for everyone. Uh, you got any more questions on your list, uh, Lorraine? Oh, I got, I, got, uh, I got a lot of them. Go okay, ahead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, get some of them questions. Though. Well, well <laughs> one of them, one that uh, uh, I always ask that I'm always curious about, and, and but you only got two months, so you probably haven't experienced it yet. Have you ever gone home and said, oh, my God, that case, and thought about a, a particular case that you didn't feel iffy about or you felt bad about? Um, no, and it maybe it has something to do with the with the with the, the short the shortness of time that I've been on the bench. But again, I think that's something that if I I feel that would be like talking about a particular case, and I don't I wouldn't want to do that. But your yeah. your question is, have I ever felt that way? Yeah. In the two months, I haven't. You know, so that's just an honest good, answer. Good, good, good. On, on the county, you said on the county level, so. Um, We've had a couple of, I'm working on a book on police brutality, okay. and that's something we deal with heavily on on the show, because right. um, our community faces that nationwide. Right. Um, have you been in, a, did you, have you had the privilege, or have you been involved in any of the um, police you know, br brutality cases, or no. do you have any of that on the county level? Have you dealt uh, with I, No. When, uh, when I was in the county, I did, I did, uh, uh, only family court so okay, okay. we did um, uh, abuse and neglect cases uh, mm -hmm. and, and in, in that capacity I represented the Department of Social Services child protective service workers so um, I have not had any um, uh, uh, legal experience with with that does a judge have a boss <laughs> yes yes so there are administrative judges that um, oversee various levels of courts so our court the city court system is overseen by judge sam walker who's a supreme court judge okay and so he's the administrative judge for the city courts and so i, I don't know if you'd consider him a boss and i don't want to get in trouble so i'll say he's my boss <laughs> 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 but anyway he certainly is uh, the person um in charge of the city courts and make sure that things sort of run on time and, and that all the cases are, you know, that we're meeting our, what we call standards and goals. Now, now going back to Inspector General, when you was Inspector General, is there any, is there anything in that you can say you leave with that you initiated or you did so well that you like really, I'm sure you're proud of everything you did, but right. is there anything in particular that stands out? Well, the thing about being Inspector General was and it was sort of a joke. It's it's nobody wants to you know. When I became inspector general, I had a lot of friends in city hall. <laughs> so you know where I'm going, right? So <laughs> when I left it, it, you know, people would people would turn the other way in the hallway. People would you know sort of if there was a lunch room, I could clear it, but there wasn't. Anyway, so um, in, inspector general, I'm a pr I am proud because there was a we had a good staff that worked with us. Uh, you know, people who did, you know, in, in investigators, there were you know, an accountant in the office, there was uh, another attorney um, who worked with us. So I was really proud of the work that we did as a team. And um, to say that, and, and there were some big cases, the, the overstatement of school aid back in 2014 um, was, a, was something that took a lot of our office's time and energy. And, um, and there were a few others, but but um, to say that, you know, I'm proud that that particular case, the overstatement of state aid. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. it was like the fifty-five million dollar yeah. error in um, in accounting. It led to some changes at, at BOE at the Board of Ed that um, I think are helpful today. 
you know, sort of the cons consolidation of some services. I think they, you know, the, I, I think there was some middle management that was missing. I think they've uh, they've addressed that, and and so that's not likely to happen again. Well, the um, the person that now is the inspector general is a, a very dear friend of mine. I served with at the city council many, many, many years ago. Right. Uh, or do you support him? Are you happy? That um, he's in there? Look, I, I think. I think Liam's a, a, a good, a great choice because he's he's got a few things, and 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 I didn't really consider it until until I heard him. Uh, I think it was either at his, he was at his when the, when the mayor swore him in. Uh -huh. um, you know that he's, I, I didn't really. He's a CPA, which is there are two things that you need to be to to be Inspector General. Um, you need to be either an attorney or a CPA. He's both, but he also brings this experience um, of Yonkers of knowing Yonkers yes. government yeah. in, in sort of an intimate way. And someone asked him a question whether or not, you know, he was, you know, he was too intimate with the city. But um, knowing Liam, I think it, it only works as a benefit for the, for the people of Yonkers that he knows the government so well. Now, as a sitting judge, back to, to mm -hmm. the city has a new ordinance, panhandling. There are going to be do you know that those that are going to come in front of you are not going to have the money to pay those tickets? Right. That might be true. But then again, I'm thinking if they are repeat offenders, you could, not you, but a judge can probably send them to get some type of treatment. And I was going to save their life. So, like, Right, so not not. What, what do you think? Right, so not answering on any particular issue. Yeah. Right, so we're not talking about a, someone who's a panhandler. Yeah. But anybody who comes into our court that um, is, you know, has a mental health issue, that is um, seems or appears to be under the influence, or maybe they don't show up for a couple of times because they're they're using. Mm -hmm. um, the court does have the ability to to um, refer those uh, individuals to the appropriate. Um, uh, uh, treatment uh, programs, mm -hmm. and that happens. And you say something that's really important that that um, may save someone's life. It may we. You know, I think court, it will. I think it court will. may catch someone at, at the point in their life when they need that. Yeah. Let um, me let me let me piggyback off that. Um, my partner of the, uh, he's not here today. Damon K. Jones. He's he's a thirty year veteran of the Westchester Corrections and the head of Blacks and Law Enforcement of America. Um, one of the questions he always asks. Um, speaking personally as a correction officer, but um, and he sees it firsthand with the new bail reform. Mm -hmm. um, Westchester County uh, Corrections had a lot of programs to help um, inmates when they were in there. Right. Now with the bail reform, which the bulk of the people sitting in there was sitting in there because they couldn't afford bail. Right. Um, we need we. I believe that the money that was spent, because there's some figure like 100000 to to house an inmate for a year or something, uh, that we need to utilize some of that money in creating programs. Like, these programs help them when they're in, but now some of them won't be in. We need some of these programs outside, you know, and right. maybe a, a preventative measure, measure to help prevent them from going in the first place. Right. Well, there's um, again without getting I'm not, I'm not gonna get bogged down in the bail reform law, but but you're right that the point is that where people used to be remanded, right? You know now they're not. Now right. they're what we call ROR. They're released on their own recognizance right. and they're and they're out in the community. But the court still tracks those cases regardless. I mean, and so there are the court does have the ability to uh, refer uh, a, a particular um, individual to a program, and so when they come back. You know, because they're ROR, they come back. Um, they can then um, give us an update okay. um, on on how they're doing. Are they attending there? Are they attending? Are they, you know those sorts of things? And those will go towards. Um, in, in, and again, not talking about any case in particular. Right. But the judge will then say, okay, you know, John's working towards a you know a, a program. Maybe he finished the program. Right. Right. So that 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 helps when they're making a determination, a final determination on on the on the sentence. Now. There's very little. I mean, we got three. <laughs> we only got two hours, and I got three candidates. So right. y'all each got you know a little more than a half an hour. So it's not, but so much you can learn in a half an hour. Okay. <clears throat> so for people, but enough, wait, wait, enough for the listen, people. But listen, yes. but for people who listen in, 
Yeah. They want to know more about you. Right. Um, maybe you want to get involved in your campaign or they just want to be able to read up more. Right. Is there a website, social media, people right. can... So I, I got I to gotta be really honest with you. Before January, <laughs> I, I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't, <laughs> you know what? I had, I had, he was Inspector General. You know, right. They sit up in an office <laughs> all the way in the top of City that's Hall, right. Right. locked up in a dungeon far right. away. <laughs> I had I had email. That was... <laughs> right, 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 right. Anyway, so, but now I do. I have a... Uh, there's uh, Judge McGrath. Uh, Judge Brendan McGrath is my, is my Facebook. Mm -hmm. And people can go there. Um, you know, if you have a question, you can ask a question. Again, people, under, people need to understand that I, I can't answer everything, but, right. but if there's a question... Um, uh, certainly that I can't answer I will right uh, you can learn about me you know about what I'm doing um, during my campaign you can learn about it in, uh, on Facebook and I think they have some other um, might be um, a, a direction to a website as well okay, okay. And, and it's important to note that he he was appointed by the mayor he's right. currently sitting judge right. he's running for it and he's running for election and he is the, the Democratic Party's endorsed candidate so since there was um, last year, since we had a lot of traditional candidates on, and there's so many things I can't ask you, I, I came up with three questions that have nothing to do with the campaign or anything. All right, just to ask you, just for the heck of it. Yeah. So, so if your house was on fire, you could only grab three things. What would they be? My wife, my son, and my daughter. Ah, good. Um, if you were a superhero, who would you be and why? <laughs> um, Inspector General, the invisible yeah, man. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna answer it. Um, you know, uh, growing up, I just, I, I always, I always loved Superman, and, okay. and I just felt like, you know, he was, you know, he good versus evil, you know. Right, 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 right. So right. yeah, I'll say Superman. Okay, okay. Actually, there's only two. I couldn't think of what the third. No, I, there is no third. Okay, question. so it's just a, there was just two. So there's just all two. Right. I ask all of because it breaks up the monotony. That's You're right. You're not gonna get these questions from anywhere else. That's right. You're on right. the campaign trail. <laughs> I welcome you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. So, is there anything more importantly? Is there anything we have not asked you that um, you would like to speak on as far as your platform, about you as a person, about pe why people should vote for you? Anything that we haven't right. asked you want to add on? Sure. Your own? Um, I think you know I've been. Um, I've been living in, in uh, Yonkers for, uh, for over 20 years, okay. raised my kids here, mm -hmm. um, plan on staying here for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, um, you know, in, in the jobs I've had up until now, I've always approached it that this is my home, this is where I want my kids to live, I want them to raise their families here too. Right. So um, I, if, if people are concerned about um, how I'm gonna be as a judge, um, I'm going to be as a judge like I am as a dad, a parent, a volunteer coach, anything else. Right. I'm looking out for the community. I'm making sure that people are safe, that the community is safe, and that, um, that you know, it's, it, Yonkers at the end of the day is a place we can all be proud of. And um, last question I have for you. I don't know if Lorraine has any more. No. Um, who is Brandon McGrath the person? Not the candidate, not the judge. Right. Who is Brandon the person? Right. So what I love to do is I coach my son's uh, – uh, CYO basketball team. I've done that. He's 16. I've done that since he was five. Um, I like to play basketball. Um, uh, what position? Know. What's your position? <coughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be a shooting guard. Let's say. All right. In, in the best in the best world. Um, in any case, I, I you know I, I enjoy that. I, I play the guitar. Um, you're not not in, uh, you won't see me at a bar, but I, I play for fun, for amusement. Um, I have um, you know I. I I have two kids. They're 16 and 18 years old. My daughter's in college, so uh, that's a big part of my life. You know, we, we visit my daughter at school, you know, occasionally. But um, but yeah, I'm a family man. Um, enjoy sports. Uh, play fantasy football. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, Do you have any pets? I don't. Um, but I grew up. Every year of my life, I had a dog until I moved out of my parents' house. Oh. And uh, my um, my wife is is allergic, and but we've we've found breeds that that are you know hyperallergenic and, and mm -hmm. you know we're trying <laughs> we're working on you're it considering <laughs> it. yes um you said sports yankees or mets oh mets i'm not okay. gonna i'm not gonna i see you got a hat on so uh, no but, no no <laughs> but, but, but that's just you this, that's just you know some of us wear these hats they're just to, they're hats i know, you know i know the yankee hat is the hat to wear like, it is yeah, yeah. it is and there's no doubt yeah. um but but i i 
I, I own the Mets. I, you know, like I like them. I know it's a tough time for them right now. I was but, uh, I was a big fan of the the eighty oh, the the Daryl Strawberry Dwight Gooden yeah. era. Yeah. I was a very big fan. Well, of that them. was a that was an era that came off a very low point. Right. You know, from the yeah. late seventies into the early eighties, and Mets, then they yeah. they drafted the Strawberry Mets, and yeah. Gooden. Yeah. They got Keith Hernandez. They got Gary Carter. Yeah. And that team. The 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 sad part about it was they only won one World Series. Yeah. It was tough, yeah. but yeah. hey, they won one. Um, football. Uh, Giants. Uh, Jets. Uh, Giants. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said you said you like to play basketball. Uh, Knicks and Knicks. 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 Okay. Knicks. Um, yeah. I'm a lifelong Knick fan. A lot of heartache there. Um, yeah, very. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very, yeah. Look, a lot, I, lot of heartache there. I tell you what. You know. <laughs> uh, you say. You know. Currently, could I name? You know. The players. I, I probably couldn't either right now. No, I was when 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 you know the Ray Patrick, Williams was there, Bill oh, Cartwright. Ray, Ray, you know, yeah. those. I mean, those are teams that I, I when I was real little watching yeah. and lo- really loved them. Like yeah, Ray I was, I've been a fan since uh, Bernard King. Yeah, I, I love the Patrick Ewan, John Starks, Anthony Mason, yeah. Charles Oakley era. Oh, that was good. that was great. that was like when you knew that's series like, against Houston. Even, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Even even when Jordan beat us. When he left the arena, he knew he was in a game. That's he right. got a beaten. That's he got, right. Yeah, That's you, right. You didn't come through that middle at all. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, anything else we didn't ask you? Anything else you want people to know no, about I, you? No, I, I, I think this was great. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. And um, and like I said, if people, if there's something that people didn't hear that they want to know about, you know, they know how to get me. Get me through Facebook. You know, right. uh, message me there, and I'll, I'll 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 let everybody know what I can. You know? Okay. And if and if you're a Democrat and you're registered to vote in the city of Yonkers. Um, Folks are going out there with their petitions, knocking on doors. When, yeah, when is the petition start? Yeah, so I came, right before I came here today, I was petitioning um, okay. most of the day. So it started um, on the 25th. I okay, believe, the 25th. Okay. And then it goes until the end of March. Okay, the end of March. So right. we'll know who's on the ballot at uh, the beginning early of April. April. Early yeah, April. Yeah, or okay. sometime in April, right. Okay. Right, when it all gets settled out. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I wish you well. Thank you so much. It was, it was a pleasure, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Uh, and I congrat. I, I wish, yeah, I wish you well. Okay. And as a, and, um, I just became a Democrat after many, many, many years as a Republican. So I can say I'm going to vote for you. I'm oh, really thank excited you. Thank about you very that. Much. I'm That's so right. excited. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, shout out to a few other people tuned in and sitting here at Hector San Diego. Stephen Simpson, um, Yonkers Councilwoman, I mean, I'm sorry, White Plains Councilwoman, Nadine Hunt Robinson. How are you? Um, oh, 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 she knows my sister. You know my sister, Miss Robinson, Councilwoman Robinson, Susie. She oh. told me. Oh, okay, Susie. She, uh, she knows her bank. from the bank. From the bank, yeah. yeah. She's, okay, okay. Yes, good people, good people. Um, is anybody, Alita Johnson, I didn't mention her before. We said Johnny Limo and everybody else that's tuned in on any of the other pages that I can't see. Um, I'm going to play... I'm going to pay some a bill right now, and we're going to bring the next candidate in while the commercial's on. So you can go ahead. And... Thai Associates is a... I forgot to uh, switch screens so people can see it. That's what's supposed to be on. Bear with me, people, and here's a word from our sponsors. Thai Associates is a BBB-accredited financial firm serving Mid-Hudson, New York, and the surrounding areas. From tax return preparation and amended returns to refund planning, we offer reliable financial services with keen attention to detail. Since 1998, we have proven the quality of our service with our clientele reaching across (laughs) all 50 states. Thai Associates (laughs) manages the Mets. Money, energy, time, and space. Let us go to bat for you, Thai Associates, tying it all together. And that is our sponsor. Shout out to Thai Associates. Um, they are just renewed their commercial. We we're happy about that. Um, and and everybody out there, you too can advertise your business or your organization or if you're a candidate running for office. You can too. You too can have a thirty second commercial spot on uh, <laughs> Black um, People Before Politics. Email us at blackwestchester at gmail or advertise with bw at gmail for rates and uh we have specials that that are packages that include the website and the paper and social media and all that other good stuff so without further ado we're going to get into our next guest again uh, Lorraine has put this whole show together with Jen, uh, Jen Okas. Okay, but salute, I mean, as far, but salute some, to the lady. But I'm saying, as far as like on the show, though, I didn't put the show together. Yeah. I'm giving you your props. So, uh, Lorraine is the 
the, the, the co-producer of this show. <laughs> she, she co-produced this show. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you an invoice after. Okay. <laughs> so so um, would you like to introduce the next guest now? Yes, the next ge- guest is, um, you know, I'm really, really excited okay. um, that she's here and that she's running. Uh, Ms. Vera Shaco, she has, is the nominee from um, one of the, um, I remember I said this, there's three slots and there's five people running. She's one of the Democratic nominees running for this spot. Okay, okay. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm really, really excited because... Uh, shout, shout to Jen Elka. She's tuned in right now. Hi, Jen. She's and uh, Wayne man. Robinson Sr., my cousin. Uh, what's up, cuz? Go ahead. Um... We have an African American woman running for judge. Yes. So, so uh, let Do me ask you a question. Do you know how exciting well, well, that is? Well, let me is. ask you a question. Have we had any African Americans on the Yonkers City Court yet? No. A uh, 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 man. We, uh, we Yonkers. Have, no, not African American uh, uh, women. women. Not okay. women. We've not had women. Three African American men. So, just so you know, if you were to if Yonkers, if y'all were to elect her, she would be the first she African would be American the first. Yes. woman to serve on the Yonkers City Court. Yes. Okay. Right. There you go. There you go. So, so a um, lot to be proud of. So, tell us who you are, not the candidate, but who you are. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate it. My name is Vera Shaco, and not the candidate, huh? Yes. So I am a mom. Okay. I have a four and six year old. I was Ooh. really involved in just PTA stuff and okay. Girl Scout stuff. I've had my own practice for the last, since 2009. Okay. okay. So this will be 15 years. What, what kind of law did you practice? I've always practiced criminal defense. Okay. And so okay. I've done that for the last 15 years, and I've consistently worked in Yonker City Court for that time and other courts here in Westchester and New York, and I also do family court. So I do the custodies, the visitations, the neglects, the, you know, termination. So I see how, you know, it can really impact people's lives when the government gets involved, families get separated, and, you know, how that can really have a negative impact and how parents through services can really work to get their families back Back. together. So that's kind of always been my passion. Mm -hmm. I think I, I grew up in Mount Vernon like you. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. And since I was a teenager, I just wanted to be a lawyer. So I finished high school, college, law school, Mm -hmm. and I remember going on an interview and trying to chase the money and saying, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to serve my people. I want to follow my passion. I called up the Legal Aid Society and took a job there. They assigned me to Yonkers City Court. Mm -hmm. Oh, how cool. And that was 2005. It's 2020, and I'm still going there consistently representing members of my community, making a difference <coughs> one person at a time. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to continue on, and there's an opening on the bench. It's not that we're trying to get rid of someone who's there. There's an opening. Someone there new opening. will be placed yeah. there. So I said, why not someone who's been in the courts for the last 15 years committed to serving the community, Mm -hmm. getting that opportunity. So I worked really hard at it, worked hard at getting the nomination, and I was successful. I'm the first African-American woman to be nominated to run for Yonkers City Court Judge. So how do you feel your work in in the court up to this point um, will help you um, become a, a great judge? I think it gives me perspective as to the people who will come before the court Mm -hmm. and what their issues are. I think after working with people for this long, you know, what I've always respected about Yonkers and the judges in Yonkers, I just want a judge who will take the time to listen, Mm -hmm. you know, and treat the litigants with respect and patience Mm -hmm. and just hear them out. And I've seen judges who've not given people what they want, but treated them in such a way that they felt like they had their chance to be heard in court. And I think that's what it's about. No matter what part of Yonkers you're from, no matter your social economic status, you should be treated the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the work I've been fighting for the last 15 years. That's what I've been fighting to do for my clients. And that's what I'll bring to the bench, an ability to listen to the people that come before me. Now, now I, the the last candidate that was here, um, one of the things I said in our community, the black and brown community, 
um, there's a saying, you know, they say that uh, that uh, the, uh, the justice is blind, but in our community, it seems like um, she peeks through under the, the blindfold before she rules um, um, and sees as one of us and then, you know, comes down hard. Um, you, why it's important to have an African-American female in, in that position? Because you have perspective. Right. You know, you, um, as a judge, you would be able to relate, and all judges should be able to relate to the people in mm-hmm. front of them and see them as people mm-hmm. and treat them the way they would want, you know, someone they cared about to be treated. And I think that's what I would bring to the table. I've represented people from all backgrounds, you know. I've represented people who had money, people who didn't have money, and everyone, you know, parents who had their kids incarcerated from all different races and backgrounds, they just want to be treated fairly. They want to understand the process. They want to be treated with respect, you know, and that's what I would bring to the table. And one more question. And Lorraine has put together a list of questions that you can ask judges. She pulled up, so I want you to find some questions you haven't asked yet to ask her, but I want to ask you first. Um, so, so, you know, as we said, we feel... <coughs> As African Americans and Latinos, we feel like we don't always get a fair shake from judges, especially the ones that don't look like us. So um, as an African American woman um, in a world that is still racist and sexist, um, what if you had um, someone come to your court who, I don't want to say white supremacist, but had that attitude, you know, towards uh, towards us? And um, how, how would you, could you be fair and partial in a situation like that? I mean, I think after doing this kind of work for 15 years, you encounter all kinds of people from all different backgrounds. And I think it's incumbent as a professional, as a lawyer, as a judge, not to lose your cool. And if you find that you can't maintain it, then it's your responsibility to walk off the bench. So that's what I would do. I mean, I've kind of, you know, I've done what I needed to do to remain professional. I think that's very important. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why I'm here today. Right, right. And so if you cannot do that, then I think you have to step aside. And, you know, if you need to let someone know they've stepped outside the line, you do that. But you also have to maintain a level of professionalism. So, again, and, and this is questions as an African-American woman, I can ask you that I can ask the other judges. So so I know one of the fear of uh, those who don't look at us, look like us, of having us on the bench, they think we're just going to let all of us go. Um, <laughs> could you be hard on an African American uh, uh, but fair and, 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 and the same but if one needed to you need to come down you can you you can do that and I mean I'm not just a per I'm a person of color but I'm so much more. Okay. You right, know, right, right, and right. I've been in the justice system right. and I've seen that, you know, crime is not committed by one particular group of people. Right. It's just that in different communities it's treated perhaps treated differently. Right. right. Is how we would say it. And I'm I'm also invested in my community. I've mm. lived here in Yonkers for the last sixteen years. Right, right. I have a four and a six year old you know, when I had time to go to the gym, you know, I would go to the gym and I would look in my car, you know, at 6 a.m. to make sure no one was waiting for me. Right, so right. safety is important to me, too. Right, right. You know, but also ensuring that people who are accused of crimes have a fair shot is equally important. So it's about balancing mm-hmm. and listening to the evidence that comes before you and trying to make a decision based on the evidence mm-hmm. and not rushing to judgment, taking your time, being patient and giving people an opportunity to be yeah, heard. I, I used to be a recording artist, a rapper, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, Strong Island. And, and, they, and they, they, um, they had started a program um, in the Manhattan, uh, Manhattan Set, det- Detention Center, I guess it was. Um, they, they were starting to get entertainers to come in and like perform. They, I guess there was a program they were trying to start. So we actually performed in there, and then we ate in the mess hall with them. Mm-hmm. And um, I will say... Uh, while I'm glad to never really have seen the inside of a jail, and I think there's too many of us in there that don't belong in there, th- there's definitely some people that belong in jail. Like, <laughs> you say, thank goodness for it. There's, there are some of my brothers and sisters mm-hmm. that, that they belong there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got but to see that first But it's not just your brothers and right, sisters. Right, 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 right. I mean, but all... all different colors but there were some people I met that they, they, they belonged there mm-hmm. I was like mm-hmm. and there was some you know you know there's some mm-hmm. innocent people but there were some mm-hmm. people that you definitely knew belonged mm-hmm. there so um, I'm gonna let Lorraine um, kick off some of the questions she had she pulled up a list if you can pull up maybe some of the questions you didn't ask yet because you said it was 10 questions um, I wanna ask this one what is your general judicial philosophy um, 
you know, after doing it so long, mm-hmm. and I've seen judges from Judge Doran Sr. to Gaffney to Daly to Doran go Jr. to Scatteradico to um, Graffio. To, I've seen them all. In-law? And that's just Yonkers. In-law, and that's just Yonkers. Yeah. Yonkers City. There's Yonkers Family. There's County Court. So, you know, Nourishell Family, Nourishell City. I've been to just about every court in um, Westchester County. And I think I just want a judge. I like judges who are just patient, you know, and read the case Mm -hmm. and know what's going on. Like when you go to your doctor's office, right, you want your doctor to know who you are, you know, have read your file. I like judges who take the time, read the file, give you your time of day, listen to you, listen to the argument before they make a decision. That's what I like. And that's who I would be. Go ahead, Lorraine. I think that kind of leads to this question. What is your vision for the future of the judicial system, and what changes would you advocate for and why, if there are any changes? Um, I definitely think we need more women on the bench. I I agree, 100%. You know, it's great to have our first Latina on the bench in Yonkers, who's the third female judge there, and I'm hoping I'll be the fourth female judge there. But... um, I do believe in giving people an opportunity um, for rehabilitation when possible. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's a reasonable alternative, I believe in options like that. Um, I've, you know, seen many parents, you know, and seen them separated from their kids. And I think any and all possibilities where families can be safe together without being separated are good options. So things like that. Go ahead, Lorraine. This is a good question. Do you believe there's such thing as a victimless crime? We have to we have to look in the internet for questions that we can ask you You're because coming you, up with these uh, questions from the internet. Uh, yeah, well, we we know we can't ask you certain mm-hmm. questions. So we, I went on the internet said when I asked Google, what can I ask a candidate for judge, mm-hmm. and that that's acceptable. Do I believe there's a victimless crime? Yeah. A good question. That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of what. It what is. kind of offenses, like, would you place in that category? Then we wouldn't have that, right? We wouldn't have that offense or that crime if there was no victim. Let me. So, so, like so, so, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. So there was always a scenario, right? So a man is trying to feed his family. He doesn't have a job. He can't find work. Mm -hmm. He steals some groceries to feed his family because the family's starving. Would you consider that a victimless crime? Okay, because there's that argument. (laughs) That's not because he's taking property that doesn't belong to him. The question is what the punishment should be. Should he go to jail because of this or should we give him some other alternative? I've seen cases like that um, in real life. Whether you know whether it was stealing gro- stealing groceries, you right. know, from stores around mm-hmm. here. So the store is entitled to it. The question is, what's a, the fit? What's the proper punishment for something like and that? And how do you feel about the bail reform? Like, if we had bail reform, Raynette Turner may still be alive in Mount Vernon. I think she stole thirty five dollars worth of crab legs, mm-hmm. and she has some kind of medical condition, and she was kept in jail over the weekend until she went to court. And she died in jail. Mm-hmm. So I think with the bail reform, she wouldn't have been. If she, and, and a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of Mount Vernon police officers because they said, um, you know, there's a difference between um, how they give, uh, you know, they are or are. He said the, 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 the officer who wants to remain nameless. Mm-hmm. It's, it's exact, he said he's seen um, rich white guys come in with just about almost like a trunk full of drugs they were caught with, and they get R or because they have a rich father, and then like people like Redneck Turner, was was held in jail over the weekend because of thirty five dollars worth of crab uh, mm-hmm. crab legs or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say this: um, as a judicial candidate, obviously, I can't say what my personal views are. Right. Whatever the law is, it's my responsibility right, right, to right. follow it. Right. But I'm obviously from my work. Um, I am definitely motivated by anything that evens the playing field for all people where okay. you know everyone is treated fairly across the board I think that's a good thing so that's what I'll say 
for people that's um, just hearing about she's seeing you for the first time, just seeing you here, um, never heard of you before, Yonkers uh, voters um, that are tuned in right now, uh, website, social media, yep. how can they find out more about you or donate to you or, you know, yes. find out? You know. Um, so I have a Facebook page, which is Shaco Campaign. That's S-H-A-K-O Campaign. Yes. And that's on Facebook. It's also Shaco Campaign on Instagram. And I have a website, which is Shaco2020.com. Please come by and check it out. Um, friend me. I'd love to get the word out so people can know. Yes, we th- I think we're new friends on Facebook. I think yes, we, yes, yes, yes. We're, we're all friends on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get the word out so we can move the process forward, let people know that I'm running, get them motivated, activated. We have a chance to make history here and elect the first African-American woman who has been serving the court for the last 15, 15 years and the community for the last 15 years in Yonkers City Court. I have the time there, I have the experience, I've been involved in my community, and I would like to take the next step forward, and I would love to get the support of the community. Now, now, now we, we've had like the year of the woman, the last few years, um, it, it appears to be that way. Um, and I've, I'm, I've been very um, vigilant and saying, and diligent in saying that um, I don't believe we should vote for a candidate because they're white, or because they're black, or because they're women. So why should they vote for you? Not, not be, you know. I know the making history thing is beautiful, mm-hmm. but that you know, I feel like, you know, um, I've actually had some I guess tell me that I was a, I was a, I was a sexist because I didn't, I didn't support Hillary. Um, um, I just didn't like her as a candidate. You know. <laughs> well, and, yeah, and, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not for the titles either, right. but I have 15 years of experience in that court. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Judge Daly's been there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I've been the longest serving, really? in that, working in that court, as far as I believe. Wow, that's awesome. So that's pretty cool. 2005 until now, I've been practicing consistently in Yonkers City Court and other courts here in New York State. Mm -hmm. So I have the amount of time. I don't have to go in and learn the courts, learn the system. I know the players. I know how it works. And I bring the perspective of knowing how the court works and understanding, you know, the dynamics of what happens in a courtroom or in the courthouse when I, should I be elected? Um, uh, anything, anything how, else how how is the reception you're getting out there? Are you campaigning in Ackland Doors? What are people saying? People are happy. They're excited um, to hear that someone like me is a candidate for a change. Um, you know, I people are happy. They're surprised that I've been practicing this long. Mm-hmm. You know, they so say you I, look young. I look young, but I've been there. I mean, this was my passion. So once I got out of law school, this is what I started doing. And it's what I've consistently done. And it didn't affect everyone, but I feel like it made a difference in each and every client's life. Mm-hmm. You know, and for me, that's meaningful enough. And that's why I said I want to take the next step forward and see what else I can do. So people are happy. I'm trying to get them motivated. Make sure they come out to vote. Don't just be excited. Have that excitement come to the to the poll yeah, and yeah. make sure you vote so we can have the change that we want. There's a couple of comments on here on on uh, um, on the live stream. Uh, Delphin Hauser from the what is it? Delphin. Yeah. The Wizard, Yonkers. Yonkers Insider. Okay, yeah, the Yonkers Insider. No, no, just uh, I'll get to them next. Um, the Yonkers Insider um, said um, that Varys will make a great judge. He's been saying that since day one. Uh, um, Hi, Del. Paul right. Anthony. Paul <laughs> Anthony Cuesta said it's great to see a candidate who acknowledges that people that commit crimes come from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, shout out to Charles Stern, one of our guest co-hosts. Um, Terrence Rock, Jeff Monroe, Keisha Nunn. Louise Sanchez and I said Jan Elker. Um, any more questions? Um, is, is there anything I have not asked you that you want people to know about you? Uh, your candidacy, you as the person, why they should vote for you. Anything I haven't uh, wait, asked wait, you? Wait, wait, wait! I have a question. I have a go- go- a quick question. It's a primary, right? It's a primary. When we is have the primary? Th- so the primary is June 23rd. We have three okay. seats available, five candidates vying for it. So we're going to have a primary, and it'll be the top three vote getters. So please come out and vote. And why okay. should you be one of those vote getters? Because I have the experience. I have the commitment. I will take my time. I will be fair. There will not be a rush to judgment. And I understand the perspective of the people that come before the court. So I have two questions that I ask that have nothing to do with, since there was a lack of things you can ask elected officials, and you may have heard me ask the other 
No uh, sports, the, the please. Um, so, 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 so if your house is on fire, you can only grab three things. What would they be? Easy. My husband and two kids. Uh-huh, there you go. And if you were a superhero, who would you be and why? Wonder Woman. Everybody okay, says Wonder okay. Woman. Yes. Yes. Okay, I might have started out as a feminist before I became <laughs> <laughs> at like 11 or 12 annoying my family. So okay. definitely Wonder Woman. Why Wonder Woman? Um, definitely I'm for women's rights, um, women being treated equally. And I think that really, like, I was that kid at, like, 11 or 12 saying a woman should have everything the man has. And then as, like, maybe two or three years later, that grew into everyone should be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to law school to make sure that happens. Uh Uh-huh. Um, any last questions, Lorraine? Just one quick question. How, uh, because you know everybody... How are you going to handle a conflict of interest? In terms of... Uh, when you're a sitting judge, somebody comes before you that you know. Well, yeah. but, uh, in, in addition to that, you've been working in the courts for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Someone That's what comes I'm saying. Across She's going to know people. Someone comes across your, while you're on the bench that you've been involved in their case. I mean, you've been involved in so many cases in Yonkers. And, yeah. And, 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 and relatives of people, and you know... Well, if I the, feel that I can't be fair and impartial, or if I'll be biased, then I'll definitely step back and step aside. We've had other lawyers who practiced in the court become judges also. Yeah. You know, and that didn't prevent them. So... I'm pretty fair. I'm pretty patient. I know right from wrong, and that's how I've practiced. Mm -hmm. And so if I feel like I can't do what I'm supposed to do and I'm not giving the person or whoever it is an equal shot, then I I will gladly step aside. One thing I like about Yonkers is we have about five or six judges, so there's Mm -hmm. always another judge available. So so I I know there's a lot of people that want to hear this fair and partial stuff. Mm -hmm. They they, they really feel there's a a need for a lot of that. But there's some people that just want to know, when it comes down to it and there's the need to, can you throw the book? Can you be tough when you need to be tough? Yes. Okay. But that's what a judge does. Yeah, but still. But listen, there's two different things. You you understand understand what I'm saying? Like, a lot of judges are tough, and, and there's been a said there's not enough people that's fair and partial. And you said a lot of that, mm-hmm. but then there's some that other set well, of the population wants to know if you can still be tough. Well, you know fair and saying? impartial doesn't mean soft. Right, but now I, want you, I want to give you a chance to speak to that. Yeah, fair and impartial doesn't mean soft, and you're walking away. Like I said, I'm a member of this community, mm-hmm. and I'm a woman, and I have two kids here, and we want to be safe also. And I've seen enough in 15 years to know not everyone walks away scot-free. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's giving them what is appropriate in each and every case. And that does not mean everyone walks away, because if everyone walks away, we're not going to be in a safe community. It's doing what's fair in this each and every situation as you go along. My my partner um, that I started the show with, my partner in Black Westchester, Mm Damon K. Jones, he's uh, 30 years in Westchester Corrections, and he um, is also the head of Blacks and Law Enforcement of America. And one of the things he says is, you know, um, with the bail reform, a lot of the people were sitting in jail because they couldn't afford bail, but there were a lot of programs brought in, um, especially over the recent years, to help people. Um, now that these people will not be sitting in jail, um, you know, maybe we need to spend some of that money in some of these programs out in the street, you know, maybe even preventative measures, measures to stop them from going there in the first place. I agree. Okay. Any I agree. thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I think the services should be there. Mm-hmm. So, and I think not only will it, it'll prevent the re-arrest, you know, and hopefully help this person to get on a path, you know, where they won't be coming to court anymore. So I think any services that you have in place that prevent recidivism, recidivism mm-hmm. I think that's great. And what, do you, what do you say for the community? Um, and protecting the community. Yeah, there's a lot of the community that have no trust of law enforcement or, or the courts at this point. They, I know. they feel like they, they failed us all along. And for those people, you and that's them, why you want and, them to vote for you. Yeah, and that's why representation matters, making sure that you have people on the bench who understand you know, everyone's perspective and sees everyone as being human. And, you know, having people that care about them and making sure that everyone across the board, not just a particular uh, segment of the population, is treated fairly. Good last question. Go ahead, Lorraine. Do they still have the tax program, task? They still have tax. That, 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 do you know what? That program saved my life, treatment alternatives to street crime when I was a teenager. Really? I got in trouble. They put me in the task program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
They took very good care of me. Okay. We'll any, have to talk about that. <laughs> any, any last words? No, Anything again no, I didn't I ask you? Thank you for your time. I thank appreciate you. it. And I just encourage everyone, spread the word, and make sure you come out and vote on June 23rd. And remember that she is the candidate, a designated candidate for the Yonkers Democratic Party. Um, you nominate the nominees. The Nom one yeah. One of the nominees. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. We wish you well. And um, hopefully you'll come back. Um, when you make the ballot and uh, when you get past the primary and, you know, between the primary and the general election, we can talk to you oh, some more. She's coming back. We already got her. Okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll yeah, talk we to you then. To right. All Thank right. you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Good luck with everything. It's good to see you, honey. Bye-bye, honey. Good luck. I'll see you out there. Yeah. So I have, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on this book for police brutality and, um, in between guests, I'm going to play one of the songs that's one of the inspiration. Um, a young lady who actually perf um, she performed her song here live. It's called Black Boy Lullaby. Um, it's written from the aspect of a black mother to her unborn son about things she's going. They're going to have. To, she's they they're going to face. You know, just being a, a black kid coming up. And uh, we're going to play that now.
there you go. My mic wasn't on all this time. That was Angela Johnson um, of Purpose Music Group. Uh, performed here, blessed us with her song. Um, she had an album, Naturally Me, and we had her perform. She performed several songs. But that one um, means a lot to me, as I said, um, as somebody I'm working on a book on police brutality, and that song speaks from a black mother's perspective on to her unborn son of all the things he's, he's going to probably face because of the skin, the color of his skin. And I just thought that was a powerful song, and I just wanted to share that in between guests. So um, moving right along, uh, Lorraine and the Lorraine Lopez produced episode, um, she <laughs> is going to introduce the next guest, and I just turned your mics back on. There you go. All right, well, you know, our last guest here tonight, I'm, you know, I'm very happy to introduce because he ran for judge when I first ran for city council 20 years ago, and, and he won. And he's been a judge ever since. And, you know, like growing up in politics, it's like you know somebody, but you don't know them, but you know they're kind of like in the family. So I kind of say, say I grew up with him. So I just want to say real quick, and I always do this to Lorraine. So you know, Yeah, he interrupts um, me. Every no, 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 listen. So a lot of people who are new to the show, yeah. and they, they, they may not know, Lorraine Lopez used to be a Yonkers City Councilwoman, mm -hmm. and she was the first Latina Councilwoman in the history of Yonkers. Ooh. So I always give her her props. And Thank, you. Thank you. Now introduce your guest. Oh, well, now we have with us the Honorable Judge um, Daly, who is a sitting judge for 20 years, Tom Daly. That's right. Tom Daly, um, and he's been a sitting judge, and he's running for um, re-election Again, and he is the nominee. He's designated nominee from the De Yonkers Democratic Party. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. And there's that. And there's there's all the people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so um real quick because we want to get as many questions in as possible in sure. a little bit of time we have. So um, uh, why? Well, tell us who Tom Daly is. The person, not the judge, the okay. person. All right, well, as we, before we talked, uh, we're Mets fans. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So I don't have to ask you, Yankees or Mets, you already told me you Mets. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're with the Mets. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm a person who lives in Yonkers. We, uh, my wife uh, was born and raised in Yonkers. We uh, raised our children here. Two do I have two daughters, and one of them is married. And uh, the other is uh, on the way, I hope, because uh, with an ADA, <laughs> I met, I met, I met, met her. Yeah. I, I met them oh, both. The med MD. Yes. Yeah, the, the younger one is, is at Ridge Hill, yeah. uh, at uh, West Met at Ridge Hill. Very proud of the two of them. But um, yeah, so uh, it, I, of course, obviously, I was a lawyer, and uh, my wife and I both, as we got our house. I'm sorry. <coughs> Do you need some water? <coughs> I, maybe a little bit. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, anyway, uh, when we, you know, first got our house in Yonkers and then started working on a family, we got involved in various community organizations. Uh, just because my family background and hers too is that you be involved in the community, whether it's politics or something else. Uh, uh, so we did that. And gradually that did lead into politics. And somebody once said to me, you know, uh, Yonkers is really a relatively small place. You get to know a lot of people. You could be a judge, if, uh, you know, try to run for judge if you like. So I said, okay. So I started in 91. I ran for city council at 91, mm -hmm. lost that. Ran for judge in 93, lost that. <laughs> Got appointed uh, by Mayor Terry Zaleski in 95, uh, lost the election uh, to that. But then I got to run again in 2000, and I guess it was the luck of being the same year <laughs> because that's when I won. And then I uh, ran for re-election in 2010. So, so the terms are 10 years. The, the 10 year terms, terms. Ten, 10 years. Terms. The reason, one of the reasons we like to have, um, and we just started this last year, as many judicial candidates. Many people in my community never uh, are not familiar with the judges and never get to know, see a judge, unfortunately, until they're standing in front of you. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> that's so, the bad part. Yeah, yeah, so you know we don't know who our judges are, and you know, so hopefully we're we're, we're in this, you know, as, in doing these interviews, we're um, you know getting people to know the judges a little bit better and yes. and, and um, be be more informed 
on the ballot because um, I don't believe in that vote in row A all the way or just voting for people just because they're on tickets with other people. But, you know, who's the best candidate? No, and yeah. people need to know. So um, why should they vote for you for re-elections? All right. Well, I've uh, demonstrated for the past 20 years that uh, I can certainly be fair uh, and impartial to all the litigants that come. We have criminal, we have civil, we have small claims court, we have landlord and tenant court, so we have a lot of hats to wear. And uh, most of the people, of course, the criminal people are entitled to and get representation. But on the civil side, many, many of the people don't have representation. So it's a little bit of a challenge to sort of shepherd them through the system. We can't advocate for one side or the other, uh, but we can provide information and we can certainly keep in mind that these are people that maybe need more uh, of an explanation of what's going on, uh, of their options and so forth. So I, you know, I've been doing that for 20 years. Before that, uh, as I said, I was an appointed judge in 95 and then after I uh, didn't win that election, uh, the court hired me as court attorney, which is like an advisor and assistant to the judges, uh, writing decisions, doing research and stuff. And I did that for five years. Okay. So I've really been in the Yonkers City Court for the past 25 years. I can't believe I've done anything for 25 wow. years. <laughs> right, right, right. Except be married. We're married <laughs> 30. I have to make sure I say we married 38 years because I told somebody 37. Carol said, no, no. <laughs> well, you deserve a, a round of applause for 38 years. But... Right. A lot of people ain't seen 38 years. A lot of people on their second, third, and fourth marriages at the NEVS. Some of us are not, don't even have our first. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, some so, of us are lucky, though. We pick <laughs> right. So, so the, in, in the challenge of asking questions and doing interviews of judicial candidates, there are things you can't speak on. So Lorraine today, before the show, um, went online and looked up things you can ask a judicial candidate. And she has a list of 10, um, if you can pick a few, um, that you like to ask uh, Judge Jelly. All right, some of these are going to be duplicates because well, they, yeah, they, no, they need to be yeah, asked. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, this one is a good one. How do you define injustice and how would you deal with injustice when you confront it or have you dealt with it when you confront it in your courtroom? Sure, well, uh, it, injustice is not being able to uh, uh, tell your whole story to be listened to, and then the decision has to be made. Now, the decision obviously is not always gonna go, for example, in the criminal case, uh, a defendant is presumed uh, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll be acquitted, and sometimes uh, the evidence uh, points to guilt. And we've developed this structure uh, over you know many hundreds of years, this this whole common law structure that we have, and I, I think it works pretty well in determining uh, uh, in the criminal side guilt or innocence, and then in the civil side determining who has proven their case, their claim, like small claims for example, by what we call a preponderance of the evidence, and that's basically what it is. A judge has to weigh the evidence. Uh, sometimes in criminal, the judge has to guide the jury into how they're supposed to weigh the yeah, evidence. Yeah. And we hope that the result is justice as much as it can be in any human thing, because uh, anything human is, is going to be subject, of course, to mistakes. Uh, but we try to minimize, minimize the mistakes. Next question, Marie. Can you explain your judicial philosophy in plain English? <laughs> uh, you know... It, that everyone who comes before me should leave feeling win or lose that they got a fair shake. That's very nice. That's very honorable of you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that's how I felt when I was uh, a practicing lawyer because I practiced for about 10, 15 years before. And, uh, you know, most judges, I have to say, were <laughs> like that. Occasionally, you know, you get some you didn't feel you were listened to. But uh, by and large, it's... It's what we strive for. Let me ask you a question. I'm really curious. Have you ever been scared on the bench? Like scared that... Uh, Physically, you mean? That, uh, yeah, like, oh, nah. oh my God, there's a criminal that... No. Nah. No? No. Nah. I mean, we have 
fine court offices uh, with us, protecting the public as well as the judge. Mm. Uh, in fact, if something does get a little crazy, the first thing the court officers they do is grab the judge, you, leave the and bench they Because yeah, I've away. seen that happen in Yonkers. I, I, yeah. I, wanted, I have to tell you a story, uh, I, and I won't mention who it was yeah. or where it was or anything like that, but uh, uh, there was, a, a, in another jurisdiction, uh, somebody got a little out of hand, and the judge... Uh, himself before the court officers court anything jumped off the bench and grabbed the guy. Oh my God! <laughs> and afterwards they said, "Judge, you should have done that." But, <laughs> what are you doing? So they tell us that in judge school, we go to school from time to time every year, and uh, uh, keep up with the newest developments. And one of the things they says, "Don't do this. This was done. And th- don't ever do this, because if nothing else, you'll get your court officers in trouble for not being <laughs> fast enough to protect you." Now, now, this is just in. Um, can I interrupt? So, judge school. Tell us about that. That's something the average person never heard of. What, what is judge school? Sure. Uh, well, every uh, July, usually July or August, uh, in the summertime, because things have slowed, slowed down a little bit, uh, they take in rotation groups of judges uh, in different parts of the state, and we go to, like, a hotel, uh, uh, something like that, for a couple of days, and uh, we have lectures on various developments, uh, you know, going over new statutes that were passed in the previous year, uh, important decisions that the appeals courts uh, have decided that should guide us, uh, maybe new procedures and policies that the court uh, system itself has issued on how to deal with various issues. And uh, so we keep up, you know, and then you see uh, you may see people that you don't see all year from other parts of the state or other parts of the county and all, and you catch up with, uh, you know, uh, how your approach uh, is to to various issues that come up. So, And then, of course, when a judge is newly elected, uh, for example, uh, if uh, I know Vera Shaco was here before, yeah. and uh, in the course of time, uh, if she gets elected, she'll be going to uh, judge school next January. And uh, she'll be given, uh, you know, uh, updates, pointers, and so forth. Uh, because it is a different thing. You're an advocate for so many years. I was. Uh, Veris uh, has been an advocate. Uh, so you have to put a different hat on when you become a judge. Mm-hmm. You're not an advocate for yeah. one side or the other anymore. And that, uh, you know, you have different things. Uh, former judges, par- current judges, pardon me, attorneys come in uh, to lecture on different things you're going to face now as a, as a new judge. So uh, two aspects of, of judge school, as we call it, yeah. A um, couple more questions from your list. Oh, I, I put my list away. Hold, hold on, I got to find <laughs> God darn it, AJ. So, 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 so okay, um, while you're looking for that, um, for people who um, want to know more about you, I mean, there's only so much you can say in like a half an hour. Uh, um, website, social media, anything? Yes, yes. Just, my wife said, make sure you have this. <laughs> oh, by the I'm, way, he's got a lovely, lovely wife. I really like her, and I love his daughter, too. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank very, you. very, very nice she people. Is, she is fantastic. And they, they, and, they, and they take a very good friend of my friend, Del. Oh, Del from Del from who just who's said, listening. Who said that you are an honorable judge and an honorable person as well. Um, I know him close to 30 years. Oh, Del from... <laughs> And Do- and Donna Nolan uh, just said good evening, guys. Tuned in late. Hello, Judge Daly. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they're great people. So yeah, yeah. Website, mm-hmm. social media, anything. Yeah. Like that? Uh, Facebook, uh, Judge Thomas Daly. Uh, email is Judge Tom Small T Daly, twenty twenty at Gmail. And the website, is, I looked at it fast for a minute, and I thought it said reject Judge Daly. It says re- uh, re- 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 elect Judge Daly. <laughs> we got a judge with a sense of humor, too. That's right. cool. You have That's to good. You've got to have one you when have you're have at the bench, right? Absolutely. I mean, a sense of humor helps everybody yeah. in life. you got to have a sense of humor. Well, you know, my dad used to say, God rest him, none of us are getting out of here alive. Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, take, take uh, each day as it comes and have humor. So, yeah, so it's reelect judgedaily.com okay okay uh Lorraine you got any more questions on your list um at least one or two more if you got yeah 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 I do how do you handle conflicts of interest oh well uh in in terms of me with the case yeah oh yeah well you can uh, uh, there are certain categories where uh it's absolutely forbidden by rule 
uh, like for example, I couldn't sit on a case uh, presiding over my my daughter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or if my daughter were the attorney. Uh, however, if uh, somebody that you know, uh, you do things certain things. First of all, you disclose to both sides. Uh, I know this person, uh, and uh, if you feel you can be fair, uh, despite knowing one of the sides, mm -hmm. you say. Uh, to the two sides, the attorneys, whatever it might be. Uh, do you have any objection to me proceeding? And if they don't, you can proceed. Uh, but a lot of times you do like to, even if you feel you could be fair, you think maybe it's better to step back anyway. And recuse you know? yourself. And recuse, exactly. Yeah. And of course, uh, as Vera said, because I was out in the room mm -hmm. hearing her, uh, we have the, uh, you know, six other judges to take the case if we need to. That is a good question. What have been the most effective methods for improving court procedures and efficiency? What other methods would you suggest? Well, I tell you, and I've been saying this uh, in, in part of my campaign, I am really happy with the court staff uh, that we have now. It's amazing how they stand up to challenges, take the challenges on, and do good work. They're very uh, polite to the people. Uh, they're very informative to the people. Uh, uh, you know, as to what they need to do, where they need to be. And uh, that's basically the staff of the, forget the judges, the okay. staff of a court are the people who are going to come in, interact with the public, mm -hmm. uh, you know, answer their questions on the phone, help them when they come to a counter. And when they're, they have good morale and good training, it's a breeze. Mm -hmm. And we have Marissa Garcia is our chief clerk. She's been our chief clerk of. Uh, 15 years now, was a deputy before that, so I've known her 25 years too there, mm. and uh, she really, uh, it's amazing how calmly and nicely she keeps the staff in good morale, and uh, I think that's uh, that's key. Now, have you ever, without telling us about the case, have you ever gone home and had a sleepless night over a case? Uh... I, I, there are times when I've thought about the cases again, uh, just to go over in my mind how it went. But uh, in terms of agonizing over it, now I think I, I think that's a quality that is good in a judge to make a decision and feel comfortable with the decision. Now, I've I've been reversed on appeal in some cases, and you know that's that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. You do the best you can, make your decision. Uh, no, unfortunately, I stay up a lot at night, but it's not from that. <laughs> <laughs> it's from, the, you know, uh, whatever keeps us o older people. <laughs> so you've been out campaigning, knocking on doors? Oh, or? yeah, yeah, and mm. going to events. That's, that's one thing I know you're Yonkers. everywhere. I see you there's, on Facebook. There's plenty of events in Yonkers. There's always events in Yonkers. That, that was the other thing that my wife and I... Uh, got a kick out of when we first started in this that there's all kinds of organizations clubs events going on flag raisings at city hall you know? yeah, yeah 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 so you know with the lack of things you could ask judges uh, we did some judges last year and i i asked two questions that have nothing to do with the election have nothing to do with politics okay. just just regular if your house is on fire and you can only grab three things what would they be well, assuming that uh, my daughter won't be living there uh, much longer, it would be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, no, 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 in a good way. No, in a good no, way, I, you know. I know, but see how easy it, way he it eliminated that option and makes it easier for him to answer. Because, no, because my wife would give me if they didn't say my wife and the two cats. Oh, yeah. That's what's live. In me. I tell you, it's, it's, geez, to this day I can remember it. Uh, I was in college, I guess, right? So I was coming home, and I got off the bus because uh, I went to St. John's, and occasionally I have to take the bus all the way from Queens to, to the Bronx. Uh -huh. And I see all these two blocks up. I'm walking up towards my house. There's these fire trucks and everything. And I said, gee, what happened? What happened? I get it. It's my house. Oh. And we wow. had a cat, of course, and everybody had gotten out, and my sister, she was must have been 10 at the time, 11, 
She rushed back in to pull the cat from under the bed. Oh, my God, I did that when I was 11 when our house burnt down, too. I ran inside wow, and got the that's, cat. That's, isn't that something? Yeah. And, oh. and you know, it was, it was upsetting. But I said, I, I got to go get the cat. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a variation of a question, a different question than sure. we've ever asked everybody else. Because you, you, we already talked about you're a Met fan. If you was a professional baseball player, what position would you play? Ooh. 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 That's good. I think left field. And why? Uh, because you get a little time to rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Anything I didn't ask you that you want everybody to know? Uh, just that uh, I'm happy to serve the people of Yonkers in this position. Uh, I've been dedicated to it for the last 20 years. It's been a ball doing it. I, I've enjoyed it. And uh, I hope that the people of Yonkers will uh, permit me to continue it. Now, here's a question, and an yeah. and, 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 uh, interesting question. So you said you've been on the, it's, it's about 20 years? Right. So do you think a judge, a judge can be um, on the bench too long? I, I imagine so. Uh, if, you know, you got to a certain point uh, where you couldn't do the job, uh, as far as, uh, since it's most, I mean, you got to keep physically fit so you can be mentally fit. Uh, okay. But, I mean, it's primarily a mental job, so if your brain is still good, I, there are federal judges, you know, they can stay on. Uh, oh, we got the Supreme Court. They stay on. Supreme the, Court, sometimes they're lifetime the, jobs. RBG. Yeah. She's, she's RBG. Like, yeah, yeah. The RBG. notorious RBG. Yeah. Right. But she's, she's trying to hold know, on to wait and, Trump out. She's yeah. trying to hold on. <laughs> she's got her, she's got her uh, head together, you know. Yeah. She's got her head together. So, uh, you know. Uh, it depends on the individual, like anything else. You know, we're living longer, we're healthier longer. Uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> we won't all get inundated with any. Uh, I keep thinking of fear the Walking Dead. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, a lot of people in um, our community they feel like, um, you know, the saying is that um, Lady Justice is blind, and a lot of people in our community, in the brown and black community, feel like sometimes uh, she peeks under the uh, uh, blindfold before ruling. So. Um, what do you say to that? Well, I would like to think not. <laughs> I would like to think that that justice is blind to everything except what came in, in court, you know, the facts that came out, whether it's a civil case, um, criminal case, and so forth. And also, uh, you know, if we had to try, if, have a formal trial of every case that came into our court, we, you know, we'd never finish. Uh, a lot of it is compromise and settling cases, and uh, particularly the civil side. So, um, again, like I said before, I hope that the people, uh, you know, when they negotiate and if we put in our input as to what would be fair in a compromise, that they feel that they did get uh, a shake, a good shake out of the uh, out of the case. That uh, you know, a good compromise is when both people walk out thinking, uh, "I didn't get everything I wanted." Yeah. Yes. Know. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. So, so this that's is human nature. You know, right. that's part of uh, human nature. Uh, any more questions, Lorraine? No, no. No. No, I'm good. See, oh, she always no, says I, I never I, give her a chance to ask no, questions. No, oh, no, I can answer that. I have a list of questions here. I can. That's all right. She'll see me in another thing. She could still me ask me. Uh. And then you could come on radio and say, I just asked Judge Daly <laughs> this one, and he said this. <laughs> Um, uh, what I do want to um, state that it's important to remember that um, he is an incumbent and he is a, a designated nominee from the Yonkers Democratic Party. Um, and they like the work he's done um, and they want to continue. And I think it's important that, that, that people know that. Thank you. Yeah. And I've seen from some of the comments that people... people yeah, people, people really like him. Yeah. People really like him. I mean, I can't speak so much for Varys. She's she's now running. Uh, um, uh, McGrath ha has has only been there for for two months, but Judge Daly's been there for a good twenty years, and he's got a wonderful reputation. I've never heard anybody call him the A word or anything like that. Thank you. you know, n never never had I heard a, never have I heard a complaint about you. Thank you. Wow. Except maybe from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Not about being a judge. <laughs> Not taking out the garbage the right time. <laughs> yeah, we all hear about that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and again, anything I didn't ask you that you want, uh, um, you know, to address or to say or, um, um, you know, get out there. Uh, again, I talked about the staff, how, how great they are. Uh, and uh, uh, Let people know if yes. anybody knocks on their door yes. with a petition that has your name on yeah, it. Yeah. Please sign it. Folks, Please. we need you all to sign this before the end of March. That's right, because that's when we got to file them. Yeah. And then June 23rd is the primary. And uh, as uh, Vera said, I saw she says there's five names so far. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there'll three be three slots. left. There'll be three left. And after the primary, that's pretty much the election. Yeah. Oh, so there's no real Republicans yeah. running on. Um, no. Well, I got nominated by the Republicans, the Conservatives, I think the Working Families Party, and the Independence Party. Oh, so you locked up all the lines. He's locked yeah, up. He's going to make mean, it. We're looking at the Honorable. After yeah. 20 years, they all said, no, there's no point. You know, let's yeah. nominate you. So, <laughs> I was very grateful to all the parties because, you know, judges are nonpartisan, really. Uh, we can't express views about uh, political issues, other candidates. We can't even endorse each other, Veris and, and Brendan and I. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but the party leadership recognizes that and, uh, and came with me on that. You know, it's interesting, Florida, I happen to be a member of the Florida Bar, too. Uh, judicial elections down there, they can't tell you what party they're in. I, I'm not sure how that works. Wow. But, but uh, that's the big no-no. They can't, and, and yet they're being backed by one of the two parties. Right, uh, right. But they can't tell you what party they are, and then after they're elected once, they're just voted on to retain them. Should judge, like it would be, should Judge Daly uh, be retained on the bench would be the question. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so it's a whole difference. And then, of course, there are some states where the judges are just appointed, no elections at all. You know, mm -hmm. Even some city court judges in different cities in the state are appointed. White Plains, for example, is appointed by the Common Council. I think Mount Vernon has one appointed position and the rest are voted. Right. Yeah, so right. they have one appointed position. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it depend, when the, the court system became unified under one administrative uh, uh, ceiling back in the 70s, uh, each city was allowed to retain their own uh, way of selecting the judges. Oh, know? okay. So that's why it's still some cities have it the one way, some cities have it another way. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank um, you very much. Thank you for taking the time. I always say, you no, know. No, I appreciate it. I always it. say, I've had a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. I'll have money again. But the one thing that I can never get back is time. So I'm very appreciative of people's time. So um, I thank you for taking the time to come by here and no, share with the audience. And, and you know. No, it's a real pleasure. Yes. And, and, and let me just say, please, for uh, my, my people listening, um, uh, when is it again? June? June 23rd, uh, I think, right? June 23rd, uh, the primary. Uh, do me a favor. Is there early voting for the primary? Is there early voting? They, uh, they must be, yeah. They, yeah. They, they've they gotten that pretty well in, in shape, the early voting. I think so it's sure they must be, yeah. I know the general election, there was early voting, I think, yeah. 10 days well, think, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everything sort of got in flux because for the first time uh, last year, uh, they had moved the uh, uh, petition period up and the primary right. period up. It used to be in September. Right, right, right. Uh, and so, But it wasn't always like that because I can remember growing up uh, in the Bronx having primaries in June. So I don't know if that was something special or if they had changed it. I, I've really forgotten. You know, when George Latimer, when he was running um, against Astorino, and, yeah. um, he was here, yeah. he, he, and he said he wished that they would move it up because the Democrats are fighting it out till September, right. and Astorino was beating them up from 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 all along, you know, and they couldn't fight, you know, be the one who's going to yeah. do the fight against yeah. Astorino. Then you got like five, six weeks or whatever yeah. to fight yeah. the, the yeah. Republican for whatever party or whatever office. A long primary period doesn't really make that much sense no. because, as you say, candidates are beating each other up, and right. and and the public loses interest too. Right. You know, you right. can only keep the public's interest in this stuff. I, I, I look at the the, the presidential. The, the, the interest goes yeah. up and down. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we thank you for coming. Um, thank wish you so you well. much. Thank you for and, the water. <laughs> oh, no problem. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, have a blessed day. And uh, you too. Hopefully, I ne never see you in your courtroom. Not not I'm not sure in front not. of you. I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure not. Unless it's to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we do that too. We do weddings in the courthouse. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. People get the license from uh, Vinnie Spano's city clerk office and then they could come over to us. 
<laughs> and we can do the blessed knot. Try the blessed knot. Okay. When you're ready, AJ, I know oh, other people. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we thank you for coming. Oh, and and guys, you know what? I'm just gonna ask you. I'm just gonna ask my people. When you go in, when you go vote, please vote on the primary. And if you if you if you don't know who to vote for, I'm not telling anybody who to vote for. But just please, one of the three choices. Can you just make it for? Judge Daly, please. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good of you. Thank you. That, that's as good as a Lorraine Lopez endorsement. <laughs> you know, I, I could say that my lips endorsed you. Oh, we thank you for coming thank through. You. Definitely. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to get up and walk out. Uh, or, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the illusion. <laughs> no, but um, I'll see you around. I'll oh, see you around here. This what, week, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, while you out there stopping, you're out there. You're out there. Oh, there, there, there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I our, love it. That's our three Thank candidates you. running Thank for, you. that's three of the candidates of the five candidates that are running for Yonkers City Court Judge. He's, again, been, a, he's again, been here 20 years and he's a fresher breath of air still. I, again, I want to thank Lorraine Lopez for helping to put together this show. Uh, she booked all the guests herself. She put this guest this show together. Jan, so, Jan Oakers, so, thank you, Jen. So Love you, girl. Shout out to Jen. Shout out to Lorraine. Thank you, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and for everybody tuning in, um, I'm not sure this person's uh, Facebook name is V-E- V E B B S C. Well, hello, and they said hi. I'm not hi. sure how you hi. Um, Judge Karen Best campaign is tuned in. Mm -hmm. um, hey, hey, Karen. I think she is one of the candidates running for city. Court yeah, Judge. yeah, she's still running. Um, she's out there. Uh, Sarah Briggs um, is tuned in. Um, we mentioned Donna Nolan. She said hi, guys. Oh, we, I read that already. Um, Delphin said, "Well done, show AJ and Lorraine." Um, Thank you, Dal. Charles Stern said, this is great. I think he was talking about the, the song, right after the song we played. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, he said after the song. Um, Guy Harris was tuned in. Diane Atkins, who I believe is the assistant to, to the to county the executive. executive yeah. um, uh, she's tuned in. Carol oh, Washington. hi, Mrs. Daly. Ca 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 um, Carol Washington is tuned in from Long Island, uh, Central Lights of Long Island, one of my Central Lights of people. Was good. Was good. Um, um, she heard about the show from my homeboy Monty, who's who's in uh, Prince George County in, in Maryland these days. He used to be a sheriff. He he um, he was telling everybody check out the show, and she's one of the people. So shout out to her, um, Delfred, uh, Terrence Rock. I uh, said Charles Stern, Jeff Monroe, Keisha Nunn, Louis Santez, Jen Elker, Wayne Robinson Senior. White Plains Councilwoman Nadine Hunt Robinson, Stephen Simpson, Hector Santiago, Mr. Stop and Shake, um, Yonkers, Aleda Johnson, um, another cousin. Uh, what's going on, cousin? Johnny Limo, um, Dr. Bob is tuned in, of course. Uh, Ken Bright, Uncle Frank, Frank Julio Jr., uh, Marvin Church, Chris Breezy, Nourishell Councilwoman Yadira Ramos uh, Herbert. Uh, Yonkers Councilwoman Tasha Diaz. Hey, Tash. Um, she just had a, a, a very festive um, a birthday slash birthday party, I guess, slash fundraiser. Um, we both were in attendance, uh, and Damon as well. Um, definitely a great turnout. She brought together everybody from all sides of Yonkers, a very eclectic crowd, which is definitely a testimony to her um, being uh, her, her, her uh, since. She's been on the council, I guess, to be able to pull all those different people. Um, council President Mike Cater was talking about, you don't see all these different people. Everybody doesn't pull this kind of crowd and, and definitely was complimenting her. So shout out to her. We went to her event. Um, it was at the Rail House in, in Pelham. In Pelham. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Rail House in Pelham. Um, and everybody else who was tuned in, this is your last week to advertise. Um, Carol... Mick, oh Carol McGillan. That's Daly. just okay. Daly's wife. She said, "Great show, thank you, uh, yeah. Miss Daly, Mrs. Daly." We're glad you um, tuned in. Um, yeah, this is your last week to advertise in the March fifteenth issue of Black Westchester. For all those who don't know, 
We switched from the 1st to the 15th to release our monthly paper on the 15th. Um, just wanted to be a little different and try something a little different. It seems to be working working out. So um, this is your last week to advertise. Again, as you've seen, we have commercials on the radio show. We have 30-second spots. Um, tune, uh, if you want to get a 30-second spot or you want to advertise in the paper or on the website, um, hit us at blackwestchester.com. It is your donations and advertisements that help us keep the paper free for the people so we can continue bringing you that news with the black point of view and giving you that real talk uh, for the community since 2014. We want to thank everybody who supports us, um, everybody who holds us down, everybody who tuned in. Um, I think that's pretty much any last words, Lorraine? Uh, no, no. Uh no have a good night everybody great show great show great show uh you oh, love- oh wait shout out shout out to mayor spano he kept his word he called me up i have my first census meeting tomorrow okay that's what's up that's what's up and let me just say um i always say the lovely lorraine lopez you look lovely tonight not that you thank don't you. always look lovely but i love your outfit thank you um so i just wanted to give you a compliment ah, and, um that's it with all of that um Definitely, I will keep you updated on the status of the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain film. Yeah, I um, as we as we get to get closer to it being in the theaters, I will let you know if there's any more screenings in Westchester. I will let you know. Um, I will let you know the the status of the book as I get closer to it. <clears throat> and again, um, Damon's working on his book, and as he gets closer to that, we'll we'll ha- we'll be talking more about that. And Dr. Bob is doing a lot of research and working on his book. Holy so, uh, We'll we'll have more on that later. Um, this is one of three books I'm working on, but this one I put I put all the other books to the side. This one's dealing with police brutality and the frustration of the community uh, feels from 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 a c- repeated abuse and nobody ever going to jail and. Um, you know, a lot of white people have asked me, why are they so angry? Why are they frustrated? Why do they riot? Oh, my God. And why? This is why. why. Why does it always have to be about race? With well, you got to break it the, down to them. So this book answers a lot of those questions. Mm. And it is not um, a feel-good book. It is meant to disturb your consciousness. It is meant to, 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 to upset you a little bit and frustrate you and, and, and bring out a lot of emotions in you um, as is that film, The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. I believe they're both necessary. So with that said, um, uh, we are off next week. Uh, We are taking a much-needed week off. Um, We are on every day. This is show number 253. And we've only, in five years, I think we've only taken two or three weeks off. Usually it's like Super Bowl or Christmas or something like that. Um, But we're taking this week off. Um... Um, we're gonna all, you know, we can all use the rest. Um, Doctor Bob always said we need a week off, so we're we're taking a week off. So we will not be on next week, but we will be on um, back on the the following week. Um, next week is the what the eighth, so we'll be back on seven more days, the fifteenth. We'll be back on the fifteenth, so um, definitely check us out. Um, uh, wait, so this is first. This is the first Sunday. Of March? Yeah. Oh, so first Monday is tomorrow. So yes, check us out tomorrow on uh WVOX on the uh the Black Westchester Power Hour. We are on every first Monday, um, from eleven AM to twelve noon. So check us out tomorrow. Me and Damon will be on. Um and uh, that's about it until next week. Make sure you check out all the candidates. Very important elections. The judge election, the district attorney. That's 10 years. People the, really right, have to right. think about that. And the district attorney of Westchester is one of the most important elections you can vote in in the black and brown community, an uh, election we don't normally pay for, pay attention to, or we just throw our vote at, out there any kind mm-hmm. of way. But you need to hold these. Uh, uh, we, we had Mimi Roca on, and um, we will have um, um, the current incumbent, um, Anthony Scarpino, he will be on March 29th. He is definitely will be in the building. We'll talk about the bad cop list and everything else. We've been critical, but we're going to give him, we're going to give him the, um, you know, a fair and partial interview. Give him equal time, and let him let him tell you why you should vote for him. Why why you should why you should reelect him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what that's what we can do. And then it's up to you as it's the vote. Yeah. It's up for, as far for you as the vote is to make an informed decision on who you think the better candidate is and, and, and cast your ballot. But the most important thing is that you vote. So vote, vote, vote. Um, that's all I have to say until 
the 15th. Peace. We are out. Peace. Let me bring up the outro. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. The any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Hey, either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And are not afraid to say 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 it. I'm not afraid to say.